Okay, as you probably guessed, we're going to talk a little bit about wristwatches. And um, uh, this comes up because I was at uh, Costco today, and they had a fairly interesting Seiko diver's watch, or Seiko, however you say it, solar-powered diver's watch. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But um, I'm going to give you a rundown on some, some other watches here um, in various price ranges from relatively affordable to um, extremely pricey. Um, so here's an Invicta watch. There we go. This lens will only focus so close. So that's an Invicta. And this one, I believe, yeah, does not have a screw down crown, which is kind of disappointing for a so-called diver's watch, but it's an attractive watch. This came from Costco and I want to say it was in about the $75 price range. You see these going for various prices online. Okay, but it's an attractive watch and um, it does have a, what I, what I would call a flip lock, what Rolex used to call them, a flip lock bracelet where that locks over to lock the bracelet. And excuse me, this has not been cleaned recently. Um, so, nice, decent feel to it. One thing you can tell, even these decent quality stainless steel watches, if they have hollow piece here at the end that mates between the band and the case of the watch, if this is hollow, just a bent around piece of metal, that's a telltale sign that it's, it's not a higher line unit. Take get that to focus in again. And so everything's pretty decent on this watch, except it does not have a screw down crown and it does not have a solid piece at the end there. Moving on, here's a Winger Swiss Army watch, which really is quite often my go-to watch because it's relatively lightweight, but it's pretty durable. It's got the shoulders on the crown. It is a screw down crown, very readable, the, the hands against the the blue face. Um, very easy to glance at it and get the time. The band is relatively solid feeling um, for the weight. It's got a flip lock bracelet. It's, it, you can extend it for if you're wearing a wetsuit. Um, again, I haven't cleaned this one. Um, but a decent, solid go-to watch. This was about $50 at Costco on sale several years ago. Um, and you can see on the end of these, you might be able to see, these are just wrapped around pieces of metal. Um, they're not solid links. But again, they did a pretty good job. It's pretty well made for the price point, about $50. Stepping up a little higher line. Um, here is a stainless steel Omega. And I really like this watch in that it's, it's trim but it does have the shoulders on the winding crown, and that is a screw down crown. The links are very solid in the stainless steel band. It has a very solid feel for the size watch. Um, I would say the quality is equally, equally on par with a Rolex. The only thing, oh, by the way, these pieces that mate up to the watch are solid pieces of stainless. Okay, this piece here is a solid piece, not a wrapped around thin piece. And then the band, the way you latch it is this slides in, this slides over, and it snaps into place. Kind of hard to see that. Sort of like a hidden clasp bracelet on a Rolex. And then it has a little release here on the side. You pop that and it comes open. Now, when you're wearing it, it is possible to accidentally pop that open if you're, you know, active. Um, so that's one downside to this watch where it doesn't have a, anything flipping over and locking it, a secondary lock. So something to bear in mind. But this is a very comfortable watch to wear for a stainless steel watch. Um, very nice. This watch is about 10 years old, this Omega. It's a Seamaster, 120 meter. Seamaster. 
Okay, next. <clears throat> Here is a um, Rolex day date, Oyster Perpetual day date. Some people call them a president model. Rolex, as far as I know, always called them the Oyster Perpetual day date. Um, they're available in 18 karat yellow gold, which is what this is. They're available in platinum, and they're available in 18 karat white gold. That's it. You cannot get them in steel. Um, they are extremely well made. They have a screw down winding crown. This one has, like I say, has the president bracelet, what they call the president bracelet. That green sticker on the back was there originally. This watch is about 10 years old. Um, this watch is worn quite often. I wear it quite often. The links are in good shape. Not a lot of separation in the links. Some of the earlier day dates would wear the pins that go through. There would be wear because the 18 karat gold is soft and the bands would separate over time. This one has seemed to hold up pretty good. I haven't really had that problem with this watch with it separating. Flip lock, this is not a flip lock bracelet, I'm sorry, this is just a standard hidden clasp, they call the hidden clasp bracelet, snaps into place. This one I have not had come accidentally unsnapped. That has not been a problem with this watch. Very elegant, very nice watch. You can really wear it almost all the time. It, it could be used as a sport watch even though it's 18 karat gold. It's rugged, it, it can hold up. And so that's a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Day Date. Okay, so the last watch on our tour, this is the watch I mentioned. This is the one by Seiko that they have right now at Costco. And I want to say after the rebate, it was around $150. Um, it is a chronograph, I think they call it. Um, these, it has a bit basically built-in stopwatch, these extra buttons on the top and the bottom, start it and, and uh, stop it and then reset it. And then these are all three screw down crowns, they all three screw down. Um, the movement itself is made in Japan, the band does say made in China on it, which I'm not sure if that means the watch itself is made in Japan and the band is made in China or the whole watch is made in China and just the movement is made in Japan. But it's a solar movement. It seems very well made. Um, the band links seem solid, except for again, the piece that me meets the watch here is not solid. And I have to, you know, please excuse me for the lighting is not the greatest here. Um, the band, this is really pretty impressive how this band works. It has the flip lock here, flip that out of the way, then two releases on either side. You push in and it releases. So in practice it would be very difficult for that to accidentally become released. Now, upon close examination on this side of the band, it looks like to me like the band can extend, like this can pop out and extend. I haven't figured out exactly how to do that yet. I've looked at it and, and I hate to try to force it to pop open and extend. If somebody can share in the comments section how you extend that bracelet, that'd be nice. But this is a nice solid watch. Um, it seemed like a good price for the watch itself. Um, for, for this quality of a Seiko. So again, overall this Seiko seems like a fairly high quality piece, uh, comfortable to wear, easy to read the time. So share your thoughts and your impressions if you have one of these or if you're thinking about buying one or any of the other watches I've talked about and share in the comments um, watches that you would pick and that you would wear. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks.